Um, Frank had something personal come up and uh, will likely be able to join us a bit later than intended. So Brian's going to give the presentation here about uh, how the open science grid works. Hey everybody. Uh, so so yes, as, as Lauren noted, uh, I, I'm not Frank Worthwine, but uh, and, and I'm certainly maybe not as great a dynamic speaker as he is, but I, I did want to uh, share his slides and, and talk about uh, maybe instead of what resources OSG provides or uh, instead of the, the technical aspects of things, uh, take a couple minutes and talk about the, the philosophy uh, of OSG. And uh, when we say whether it's OSG or, or, or the PATH partnership, that we want to advance open science through distributed high throughput computing, give more of a feel for what exactly we mean by uh, that uh, sequence of words. Uh, so, so great place to start is, of course, what is OSG itself? Um, so OSG is a consortium. So it's a group of people working together. It's not a legal entity. It's not uh, uh, located at one university, but a group of partners, uh, whether they be uh, software providers, IT organizations, science organizations, users uh, that work together toward a common goal. In fact, we'd like to say uh, that we're dedicated to the advancement of all of open science uh, through the practice of distributed high throughput computing and the advancement of its state of the art. And this is even more true now as the, the PATH project is starting up. So it is, uh, a, as a group, as a partnership, we do have a, a, a leadership team, the executive team, and uh, we have a governance council, the, the OSG council. Uh, so for example, Frank Worthwine, uh, who unfortunately is not here today, uh, is the executive director and he is elected to two year renewable terms uh, by the council. And having this sort of structure ensures that all the people in our partnership, uh, whether they're being represented of uh, individual PIs and scientists up to big organizations uh, like uh, Atlas or CMS and the LHC, uh, feel that they have a seat at the table and help guide uh, the, the vision forward. So again, trying to unpack some of these terms, when we say that we're trying to uh, advance open science, we, we really do mean all of open science, uh, irrespective of discipline. Uh, so OSG is a place where uh, whether you are a biologist or a physicist or sociologist or economic economist uh, can come in and uh, utilize resources. Uh, we are uh, looking both in terms of diverse science groups um, and institutions. Uh, so we include um, individual undergraduates as users, uh, all the way up to large scale international collaborations with thousands of members. Uh, in terms of institutions, we have everything from small colleges, uh, museums, and zoos uh, up to the national uh, scale centers, uh, such as Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, or Fermi Lab. And because we have such a broad scope, whether you measure it in terms of science or in terms of institutions participating, uh, this really it uh, requires us to have a diverse uh, portfolio of services that we offer. Uh, some of them customized to maybe be the largest scale, and some of them may be customized to be uh, very simple or lightweight to run and having a, a minimal impact on the local campus. In fact, because of this, uh, depending on how you're interacting with, with the OSG, uh, it might have of uh, fairly different facets. You know, whether you are uh, advancing uh, campus uh, research on your local campus, uh, whether you're an IT administrator just trying to get your cycles utilized and shared externally, uh, whether you are a scientific user community, uh, we have many different ways that people end up interacting with the, the consortium. Uh, over the next two days, uh, we'll talk uh, about a number of these different facets, mostly thinking of the, the campus point of view 
and really how uh, we can utilize our campuses and, and campus researchers. So when we're talking about who we serve in terms of who the users are for OSG, uh, many times you can actually put them into four uh, distinct uh, buckets or four, uh, we think of these people as individual researchers and PI-driven groups. Uh, so maybe a professor and the members of his lab or the member of his lab and one or two close collaborators. Uh, and these are the sort of people that uh, are uh, able to utilize OSG directly and become OSG users and uh, utilize some of the services that Lauren's uh, talked about today and we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, some of the groups we serve are campus research uh, support organizations. So actually interacting with the entities that are designed to do uh, research computing on the campuses. Uh, so that might mean we will teach them how to integrate uh, DHTC and OSG into the suite of services they offer. And of course, uh, this idea of train the trainers. Uh, so help provide the training for these campus research organizations so they can turn around and leverage uh, or allow their uh, researchers to leverage uh, uh, DHDC. Uh, across many campuses, we have several uh, multi-institutional science teams that utilize uh, the OSG. Uh, so for example, uh, Xenon and Tun, GLUEX, SPT, uh, Simons Observatory, and many more. And then finally, we have a number of big science projects uh, that really push the scale and uh, the, the bleeding edge of many of our services. And these are, for example, uh, US Atlas, US CMS, uh, LIGO, and IceCube. So in terms of services we, we offer that people might utilize, uh, for those individual researchers. Uh, one thing that we offer is just simple command line access to a submit host where they can come and use the OSG just like they would any other batch system. Uh, oriented maybe towards campuses or some of these collaborations, we have a compute federation uh, that allows people to share their resources. And we will talk about tomorrow, but we overlay a, a Condor batch system across many clusters. So again, in terms of the researchers, it, it's seen as a single large research resource. Uh, we provide a uniform runtime environment uh, across the Compute Federation uh, in order to, to make sure that uh, the user's experience is very similar no matter where they might land within the US. And then we provide a data federation to, to provide uniform data access across the uh, Compute Federation so people can make their files accessible no matter where they might run. And again, going to this idea of, of a resource pool, uh, we aggregate all, this, all these disparate resources together for many campuses and to a number of different resource pools. So for example, the, the big US CMS experiment uh, that I mentioned earlier, takes all of their resources and puts it into one condor pool uh, where they can then add and execute all their workflows. Uh, however, OSHI also operates a pool itself that is focused on individuals uh, and, and small groups. And this is what we refer to as the OSG open pool. And this is for uh, all members of open science and uh, independent from any of the other big providers. Or, or, or big resource users like the, the LHC. And uh, we are able to take care or take use of uh, opportunistic resources and sites are able to contribute resources and determine uh, which pools that they want uh, to, to, to give their spare cycles to, uh, or they can just say, give it to the open pool and let the OSG distribute out the resources to the, the individual groups and users. So again, that's a bit of a high level overview and I really wanna focus on the, the philosophy of the OSG. Uh, that we really see our objective as to advance open science through the use of DHTC. 
Uh, we want to make sure that everybody realizes there's a number of different customers uh, uh, that we interact with. Uh, everybody from individual resourcer, researchers to big science collaborations. And particularly, I think for today and tomorrow, we will focus a lot on how we can affect campus research organizations. And then we have a number of different services from the Compute Federation to the Data Federation to the Submit Endpoints that we can offer to support these different stakeholders. Uh, so thanks a lot. And uh, as always, if you need to contact us, feel free to reach out to support at opensciencegrid.org. Thanks.